Have you ever wondered what's the best DIY renovation you can make to your home and like add a ton of value? And on the flip side, have you ever wondered what's like the worst DIY renovation you can make to your home and like not see any return on investment? More than that here in a sec. All right, so let's start with the good news first. The best DIY renovation you can make to your home is hands down in the kitchen. This is where people spend most of their time in their homes. In the mornings, middays, evenings, especially now with the work from home culture, kitchens are more important than they ever were. Zillow even backs this up. They estimate that you'll receive a 75 to 100% return on your investment, averaging around 81 to 82%. And I'm gonna give you a warning right now. It's really easy to go over budget in your kitchen. It's nice to go and look at those custom cabinets or those marble or really nice granite countertops and be like, ooh, those are the ones. But you don't wanna get over your budget too quickly and it's really easy to do. What I really recommend is focusing on those mid-grade upgrades for your kitchen. Now when it comes to mid-grade upgrades guys, which I think can be the best return on your investment, whether it's a rental property or actual home, you've got to focus on non-custom items. When my wife and I were looking actually for this house and we were redoing this kitchen, we were getting quotes for the small to medium-sized kitchen, you know, upwards of $10,000 just for the cabinets. That was before the countertops, before the appliances, the flooring, hardware, any of that stuff just the cabinets. I could not believe how expensive those were. When we looked at their quotes, we noticed they're just trying to use like small little customized cabinets and all these extra labor costs. And that was just not what we were about, especially as DIYers. So we quickly scrapped that idea. Instead, we took the non-custom approach. And what I mean by this, we just got cabinets that weren't going to have to be specially made for our kitchen. So for us, we went to cabinets to go. This is not a promotion for them. I'm just telling you where we went. Cabinets to go was by far the best supplier of these cabinets for us. Um, you have to assemble them yourselves, you have to install them yourselves. That's where you're saving the money here in your kitchen remodel. Like take a look at our kitchen before, and now take a look at our kitchen after. Pretty big difference, right? Give you a quick breakdown. From cabinets to go, we paid right around the neighborhood $3,500 for our cabinets and our butcher block countertops. Now, I know a lot of people have opinions about butcher block countertops. I really like them. They're low cost. They're durable enough for what I'm looking for in a kitchen. If I was doing a rental property in this scenario, I would lean away from the butcher block just for durability reasons. I don't want to change the countertops you know, every eight years or so. I want to put countertops in and not worry about them for 15 plus years. The other area you want to focus on is in the hardware. Now, if you look at old kitchen cabinets, I always have this uh, I don't know, 1990s, 1980s, um, you know, hardware in the cabinets. It just looks terrible. It's one of the easiest and one of the cheapest ways to actually, I guess, give your kitchen a fresh look. And do some research online. You'll find lots of discounted hardware. Check out Home Depot and Lowe's. Looking for your style, but don't go too crazy here. Now, one thing I will mention here with the mid-grade versus low-grade, if you don't want to go ahead and replace all of your kitchen cabinets, like get the whole shaker style, you know, cabinet door, but you feel like your cabinets are pretty good, like they were uh, late 2000s, uh, 2007 2008 remodel and they're just kind of a dated wood look go ahead and sand those guys down and give them a fresh coat of paint make sure to prime them and everything when you're painting them that is a amazingly affordable way to improve the look of your kitchen and you add that in with a fresh looking piece of hardware your kitchen's going to look great and it's going to look like you got new cabinets but all you really did was sand it down prime it paint it new hardware and you've already had a ton of value now another area of the kitchen that i love to talk about is appliances now the ones I probably hate the most are those like bland looking white fridges, stoves. We've all had them. I'm sure you may have some right now. I prefer to go with the stainless steel. It's a more, I would say premium look. Uh, it's a more up to date look. And it's gonna like a, it's gonna bring people's eyes to your kitchen a bit more. It's gonna make them feel like it's been updated. Even if you've just painted your cabinets or just added hardware. Just keep it simple, keep it straightforward. Stainless in the front, um, nothing too wild and crazy. None of that smart technology, which I'll get into more here in a bit. I will say this as well, I've got nothing against the black appliances, just the white is my least favorite. Typically it's the cheapest, and I think that implies to the person you're trying to sell your home to um, that you went with the cheapest option. However, not the worst thing to go for in a rental because you want durability. Um, you're not looking to invest you know, the high-end stuff here unless you, you go into luxury apartments. You want to keep things simple on the rental side, but with flips, focus on the stainless, with the rental properties, definitely a bit more leeway there and you're working within a tighter budget typically. Now one more thing I'm gonna add in here is about your lighting. Now typically you might have those old bowl lights where you know moths can go in there and just die. I like to lean away from those. Get an updated light picture but don't go crazy here either. Uh, look at some recessed lighting. Very smooth, very, not too difficult to install. Uh, gives a nice clean look to the kitchen. I'm a big fan of recessed personally. They're not too expensive either. 
one more thing too I'd love to talk about is the flooring. Now, lots of people may have old laminate flooring in their homes or heck, even old tile. Uh, if you have wood, for instance, I would definitely look at possibly refinishing the wood before you sell your home. It just gives it a fresh look. Um, but if you don't have existing, you know, hardwood floors, I would highly recommend you check out Luxury Vinyl Planking. Just because it's so durable, it has a great look to it. It's very inexpensive. It's gonna make people feel like they have that luxury, that premium feel at such an affordable price. On top of that though, if you wanna go a different route, definitely check out some tile options. You wanna look at the bigger tiles there, but don't go too pattern-based. That's something that's very in right now, very trendy. You want something that's gonna be timeless. Now, another thing about the kitchens I really enjoy is look at your backsplash. This is a great an easy way to add a kind of a premium feel at a lower cost. You know, I like subway tile. It never goes out of style. Um, it's not too difficult to install. We did it over the course of a weekend. You just need some mortar, you need your tile, you need your grout, you need your spacers, and all the other accoutrement tools that go with it. But adding a subway tile backsplash is gonna do wonders for your kitchen. I kid you not, it's gonna make your kitchen go from like a seven or an eight to a 10 very quickly. Also quickly, if you guys are enjoying this video, make sure to hit like, subscribe, hit that notification, bell as well. Check us out on Instagram at Tom and Terry as well to stay up to date on all of our latest and greatest DIY and real estate investing tips. All right, so let's dive into what I think is the worst DIY renovation you can make to your home. And it's kind of this umbrella of sorts. It's essentially customized, luxury, you know, smart items. Any of those things in a, a live and flip or a house you're getting ready to sell, you're not gonna see a huge return on your investment. For starters, in the kitchen specifically, think about smart appliances. Don't get me wrong, all for the guys. Super cool, had to get my wife a Wi-Fi coffee maker. That's coming with us though, that's not staying with the house. Um, just because something that she wanted to have but when it comes to like the fridge for instance or the microwave or the the stove slash oven um, or the dishwasher you want to keep it simple you want to get those stainless but don't want to go so high end with smart technology people are going to want to see that eventually down the road i'm sure it's going to be more affordable in about 10 years from now but right now it's like buying uh, a flat screen TV in the year 1999. It's gonna be way overpriced and in about five to eight years, it's gonna be much more affordable. So stay away from the smart technology appliances for now. It's just overpriced, you're not gonna see that return on investment. At the same time, there are things you can do to your home that you may find absolutely amazing. You know, one thing I will put out there that I have, I saw in a home one time and I absolutely loved was like a heated bathroom tile area. So when you get out of the tub, you get out of the shower, the floor is warm already. They have the same thing too, if you're living in colder areas, in their entryway where they had a heated floor. So when you're changing out of your boots during the snowy times or you're changing out of them, you're on that warm floor. And don't run huge plus, but think about the cost that goes into that. You're not gonna see the return on investment that you want as well. So keeping it simple guys, Stay away from the luxury, smart, customizable things in your home. Some of those things do add value probably to you, but what you're looking to do at the end of the day, make your house marketable to a wide audience. Whether it's your rental or your live and flip or just whatever property you're trying to sell, things that you may love, things that you cannot live without, aren't things that other people are gonna pay for. So that's it guys. Let me know what you guys think of my opinions here on the best DIY renovations you can make. Uh, hit me up down in the comments and also don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow up for some more later.